playing music in Melbourne, in my culture, it's the safest place for me to demonstrate and for me to process what's going on in the world around me. Jenny Barnes is a yeah, wonderful vocalist and yeah, improviser and I've known Jenny for many, many years, so this is very exciting. Thanks, mate. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, the, the first question is why do you have music in your life? Yeah. Well, right now music is in my life to soothe my baby. Yeah, yes, congratulations. Yeah. Singing and um, singing songs to our baby, and so so she in yeah so she calms down or to impart language with her, and um, yeah. Um, oh, and with 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 the language, are you is she learning both languages? Yeah. Yeah. So her dad speaks to her in. Farsi and uh, sometimes English, but mostly Farsi. Mm. And um, yeah. Awesome. I can only speak English, so. <laughs> well. Yeah, lame. That's, yeah, lame. Yeah, totally. <laughs> From that immediate function of music in my life. Um, yeah, I think for me, well, I remember when I first decided that I wanted to study music um, and I remember writing it down because I didn't want to forget why I wanted to start to learn um, and it was because um, I really felt very affected by music and that it could change my mood and my feeling and my perception of things with a different song um, and yeah I thought that's pretty full on so that's why I was interested to learn about it and the other another reason was before I studied it I used to think of it music as like this big black sky and all the music that I have heard of all the tiny stars in the sky mm. and that all the notes were sort of unrelated to each other and um, I just couldn't understand how all the music that I'd heard up until that point in my life was made of, of some 12 notes. Mm. Or some or like I was really fascinated by how it was all organised Mm. So had, had you done any any sort of music um, prior? Because when, when did you start studying? Was At the Gordon. Yeah, yeah. So, so after, yeah. after school, well, after high after school. After high school, yeah. yeah. So no yeah. music before that, like any instruments? No. Or, mm. I've done a lot of ballet. So I was, I, I understood rhythm and relationship of music and movement. Mm. but I didn't understand anything about music outside right. of dancing. yeah and and has that um I guess uh yeah wonderment or that fascination of like how the hell does it all work has that uh become less amazing or more amazing uh more amazing yeah yeah sometimes a little bit disheartening when I felt like Maybe I shouldn't be as spun out about all of this stuff as I actually am. <laughs> so, yeah. Like always having this really deep curiosity of what playing is and what playing music with people is. Mm. And, um, yeah, I just I love exploring that and finding finding a way that where I'm not at the front as a person in front of a band, leading a band or putting, putting a, 
repertoire in front of instrumentalists to try and achieve this notion of playing music together. Mm. And um, I just was utterly confused for a lot of um, the time. <laughs> yep. <laughs> because I was like, this isn't working out <laughs> mm. for me. It's not really ha- like listening to the music that I enjoyed listening to. I couldn't catch any of the elements that I was that I was taught to employ mm. to facilitate that play. Yeah, and so how how did you because you yeah you studied um, uh, jazz at the at Gordon TAFE, which is yeah, yeah it was a great music course in in Geelong back back in the day, and then uh, yeah, and then you you came over to to Whopper in Perth uh, and did yep. the course there. But then yep. how, how did you transition into what you do now, you know, more of the improvising? Um, I, well, I mean, how would you explain vocally yeah. what you do? Um, yeah, I improvise with my voice and um, I don't use any intelligible language in there. Um, but I explored that a lot. Like I did a Masters of Applied Linguistics mm. because I was so fascinated by the function of language. Mm. And, um, yeah, so, and then I play, I've just been so lucky to have met people to play with and to, um, yeah, like there was probably a period of about five years that I was I would have been an experimental musician, I guess. Mm. Um, Now I'm an improviser. Um, And during that experimental period, I would explore how English would affect whatever sounds and music was happening in a group. And it was the, the, when everyone in the group understands English it's really powerful and it and that's why songs with words are so powerful because well one of the reasons in 2011 I I recorded a CD Ooh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah I did that yeah <laughs> um, and that was out of curiosity too I wanted to understand the recording process and mm. um, learn about it. And I mean, it's ever evolving. But at that time, I was wanted to go to a studio and write material to practice and play. And so I did. And in between the songs that I'd written, um, I we recorded um, improvisations around um, around a particular sound. So one of them was um, teapot and singing and getting different resonances through the teapot and then the pitch of the teapot informed the key centre of the tune or mm. something like that or had like um, was looking at a river and seeing the the water reflect, I mean, the sun reflect off the water Mm. and then thinking, oh, that reminds me of how a music box works. So I've got one of those little... Mm. (laughs) ..music boxes and took the pictures from that song and then made a new song and then Mm. we, we came... We improvised and, like, I mangled it up a bit so it sounded not as recognisable as um, intended. And, um, yeah, so through that process I felt most alive and most playful in those segments of Mm. um, improvising with the sounds. Yeah. And so I thought, yeah, I'm going to... I'm going to go into that world and I'm going to... So I started out using props like that and mm. and and then I kind of moved into 
listening to different animals and trying to make my voice do that and just try to get as much sonic information outside of the human voice and try mm. to imitate that in my voice. And um, so I think that's how I started to, well, yeah, that's how I started to build my repertoire. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I mean, that sort of leads, well, you may have already answered it, but you, you the second question, which is uh, how do you make music? I like to say hopefully honestly. Mm. That's a good, that's a really good response because, yeah, sometimes when you're doing things, it's like you just, you're just playing you, you know, sometimes you're just playing music. Like, it doesn't always mean anything other than I've just got to get through this gig. <laughs> yeah. Rather than, you know, ev everything that you do, it really means something. In my experiences of playing music and presenting music to an audience, or even if there wasn't an audience playing with other people, I just felt so like, oh, if I didn't, if if we didn't, um, like that feeling of, well, we just got to get through this tune or mm. I just, I just felt crushed by that feeling mm. and I didn't want to have that feeling. It's playing music in Melbourne in my, in my culture it's the safest place for me to demonstrate and for me to process what's going on in the world around me. Mm. And, um, yeah, that the physicality of making sound and breath and playing with people and being informed by the sounds that, they're, um, that we're all uh, offering or making together mm. and navigating navigating what that is and what that feels like and what the um, response to my input is and what my response to others' input is. Mm. And, yeah, it's really, um, yeah, I think it's a very powerful exploration of, um, I think it changes the way my brain works, like, mm playing and it, uh, playing slash improvising maps out pathways that I otherwise can't find. There's lots of study on it too about, you know, what the brain actually has to do when improvising and it's, it's very, yeah, very complex. I mean, yeah, you're taking mm. the information, you're processing it, you're coming up with a response, um, yeah, in a very short period of time. Um, mm. I think it's... Yeah, it's important. It's a very yeah. important thing that we should all be doing more often. Yeah, and I think that that practice of improvising in a musical context is really, like you said, it's very important in navigating things outside of a musical context that, that can have a critical um, outcome or critical impact on your life. Yeah. Well, yeah, and, and, um, I mean, simple, like just problem solving. Yeah, because it, it's like you know you've made a sound. Someone's offered another sound. I mean, that's a, a you know what do I do next? Yeah, and you you need to make that decision straight away, and then kind of deal with the consequences. Yeah, and, you know, good or bad, or or just it just happened, and you just move yeah. on to moving on to the next thing. And you know, to do that intensely for a you know extended period of time is um, yeah, yeah, it could only be good brain exercise. Yeah. And I feel like that listening to live when I'm when we are allowed to go and see live mm. music again. <laughs> mm. um, it's worth the wait. I can tell yeah. you, it is worth the wait. And being witness to to others improvi improvising. Um, I mean, it, it is different to doing it, but it yeah, it stretches stretches your brain and you like. Mm. Yeah, I think it's so imperative that I do that. Third question. 
is uh, what excites you musically right now? Mm, it's so funny because <laughs> I feel like we're on YouTube, live on YouTube. We are. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> YouTube is just billions of live videos happening in real time whenever you watch it. <laughs> what? <laughs> what excites me right now? Scott McConaughey, he's like that guy. Yeah. And, yeah, and having an opportunity to play together with him again in the future, mm. that's really exciting. Um, I'm also really excited by what people in a generation above me who have been been um, producing work for decades, um, like Ren Walters and Carolyn Connors, um, Tinky, Scott Tinkler. Um, yeah, I'm fascinated by... Uh, what what's up next for mm. for musicians that have been doing it for a long time? Mm. Um, I'm also really into Maria Moles and um, Flora Carbo, and yeah, I just think I'm really excited because yeah, they're doing they're doing what they are mm. doing and I yeah. don't I don't feel any um I don't feel like they have any obligation to any particular person or scene or mm. I, I don't know that's just how I feel when I hear them play yeah so that's really cool mm. yeah. awesome <laughs> well yeah and I think the this yeah, it's sort of weird lockdown sort of period. Because, um, yeah, we just we just had a festival uh, here in Perth on, on the weekend and there's, there's, there's audiences out there that are very excited about hearing live music. Yeah. And, um, and the musicians are just, like, so, so ready to play and it just, it, the, the rooms just feel magic because it's just it's yeah. like it's like yes we need this and this is very exciting and it's happening so yeah i'm i look oh, for, I'm, I'm very excited for you to to be able to do that soon yay oh yeah. that's great that everyone's that that's happening mm. yeah it's, it's definitely been worth the wait sort of uh, yeah. sort of reset everyone it's like oh yeah this is this is actually really important and really exciting and I've, I need this. Cause I mean, the, the, yeah. it would have been really, really bad if it's like, Oh, actually I can live without this. <laughs> yeah. 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 It doesn't matter. <laughs> Cause yeah. Like sometimes, you know, if someone's got a residency somewhere and you're like, Ugh, I'll go next I'll week. <laughs> yeah. Go wash my hair. Yeah. 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 Hopefully that, doesn't creep back into it probably will but you know there's probably going to be another pandemic as well i think you know the way the way that we the way that humans farm animals uh oh it's just gonna you know disease is gonna keep coming anyway that's an, that's another conversation <laughs> that we can <laughs> that we can have um but yeah thank you for your time jenny it's so Thanks, nice to mate. see you Thanks so much for having me in pleasure I, um, yeah, I really appreciate being invited to contribute. It's special. <laughs> Have I got anything in my teeth? <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, as you were. Go ahead. Oh.